Good morning. Today we're starting by taking the boat across the river so we can go see Wat Arun. And it only costs five baht per person, which I don't even know how many cents that is. Basically, it's basically four cents for the two of us to go across. Crazy. The tickets for the temple are a hundred baht per person, so four Canadian dollars each, and you also get a little bottle of water. How neat! So this temple, Wat Arun, locally translated means the Temple of the Dawn. And the interesting thing with regards to this temple is that it's estimated to be at least 400 years old, but no one knows when it was actually built. So it could be 400, it could be more. We have just gone into the main ordinance hall. And just like the ones we saw at the Grand Palace and Wat Pho, there is a large golden Buddha at the center. And there are also murals covering the walls. What I found particularly beautiful about this temple is the exterior decorations. It's decorated with the same jewel toned glass mosaics, but the unique decor piece to me is this floral like wallpaper. It's basically just a white background and then it's this kind of more pale colored floral ceramic in a wallpaper like fashion. But it's actually a relief, like you can feel the texture to each of them, which is really, really interesting. Yeah, it's definitely 3D. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's getting sunny. Let's go explore more of the temple. But we can say it's beautiful here. Bum bump. Bum. Buddha up. Wat Arun is most known for its very tall prang or spire. There are four others that sit at each corner of the square and they are all decorated in the now familiar beautiful painted porcelain tiles. While this temple has existed for quite a few centuries, construction on the Prangs only was completed in 1851. So they're less than 200 years old by comparison. This temple is kind of different in feel to me compared to the Grand Palace and Wat Pho, which kind of felt similar to one another. Those seem to be enclosed in four walls and it was very clear what the palace and temple grounds were whereas this one isn't as contained you kind of start in the contained area where you see the main ordinance hall as well as the cloisters and then you kind of come out onto a different street although a very small street and walk across to this particular area where the famous prangs are 
it might be different, but I think it's a still absolutely stunning temple. It's obviously offering something a little bit different, but I think there's definitely something good about that. Yeah, and at 100 baht each, it's definitely the cheapest of everything we've done, but it makes sense because it's also the smallest. Mm -hmm. But I think those three spots are probably the most iconic and beautiful and historical to visit in Bangkok. So glad we hit them all up. Mm -hmm. We have a night bus booked so we can move on to our next part of Thailand, but that's not for another few hours yet, so... A few hours. It is just before 12.30 and the bus doesn't leave till 9. I think we have a full day ahead of us still. Quite a few hours. So, we are going to just spend some time hanging around near where we're going to be getting the bus and just chilling, really. at 20 baht. Couldn't help myself. We booked our bus from Bangkok to Koh Tao with Mama Travel and they have been kind enough to let us drop our bags off here and store them for the day since our bus isn't till this evening in about another seven or eight hours. Nick and I have both gone for the mango sticky rice and this is a dish that I have been wanting to try ever since I knew we were coming to Thailand. This is the small and it cost 50 baht each, which is two Canadian dollars each. I hope that I haven't hyped this up way too much. Mm. That mango is perfectly sweet and the rice is nice and soft, but it also comes with a puffed rice on top. So you also get this crispy texture. It's great. so because I feel a lot more relaxed. <laughs> Considering that that was our first ever Thai massage, I think it's a double thumbs up from both of us. I'm holding the camera so I can only give one, but it is a double thumbs up. Mm -hmm. As you go down a lot of places in Bangkok, there are multiple yeah. institutions, I guess, centers, spas, spas whatever you want to call them, that are offering you these massage treatments and to be honest actually in a lot of instances everybody's kind of offering the same thing for about the same price. We opted for the kind of official time massage, we went for an hour's treatment but you can basically start from half an hour and go up in half hour increments up to two hours. For an hour it was 250 baht so 10 Canadian dollars. Yeah I can't say what great value it is because in Canada that would have cost 100 to 150 dollars so this was less than 10 percent of the cost. You rock up, you select what treatment you want, you pay up front and then everything begins. The first section is just washing your feet and you get a nice little foot rub in the middle of it as well which is a very nice way to start. And then you get taken through to a fitting room where you then get changed into your kind of outfit, I guess, your garb. Once you have that and you're good to go, then you bring your changed clothes and whatever possessions you need to through to this room where there's just a bunch of mattresses laid out for you. You're then shown the mattress where then you just lay down and the massage therapist gets to work. For those of you who don't know, I'm a physiotherapist. So from what I could tell the therapist was doing is mostly applying pressure to every single muscle in your body. But then they would also throw in some passive static stretching and add pressure while you are in certain stretching positions. They also used a little bit of joint distraction, which is basically where they pull on a joint to create a little bit more space. 
And at the end, they even do some joint mobilizations. But this is a type of therapy where the therapist is very active and involved because they're constantly moving your body around. Not only are they applying the pressure, but they're physically having to hold your limbs in stretch positions or rearrange your limbs so that they can distract them or mobilize them. Yeah, it does certainly feel like they are putting a fair amount of force into it, but in terms of the results that you get out of it, it's wonderful. And it really does kind of iron out the kinks and work out a lot of the knots and the tension that you may have in your body. I don't think either one of us realized how tight we were, but it kind of makes sense because we've been walking for six and a half months, probably on average 10 to 20,000 steps a day. I found my calves and IT man to be particularly tight. Yeah, for me, it was where it usually builds, which is my quads. And so yeah, getting that properly worked alongside just the rest of your body, which always carries tension anyway, it's second to none. But before we kind of recommend this to absolutely everybody, which I feel like we want to, I think we just need to kind of set some expectations. I hope that kind of Rachel's technical description has given you an idea, but if you're just kind of looking for a nice shoulder rub or something like that, this isn't the treatment for you because it is more robust and certainly it is a lot more intense. However, if you like something whereby it really is working out knots and it is a little bit more sort of deep tissue, then this is just perfect and you will love it. Personally, I can't wait until we have our next treatment. I don't know if tomorrow can come soon enough. Although in reality, I think that we'll probably wait a few days until we get the next treatment, but certainly this is gonna be something that we soak up quite a bit of in Thailand, mm -hmm. given just how affordable it is. I genuinely came out of that thinking, yeah, I could go back in for another hour. Like, I would happily take in a multiple hour treatment on that one. That was just glorious. So great experience and I'm happy we did it. And I'm happy we have time to experience of it. Mm -hmm. I think at the moment we're going to go to a nice coffee shop so we can get some work done before our overnight bus tonight. Let's crack on. This is Ram Butchery Road. It actually runs parallel to Khao San Road and seems to offer more or less the same stuff. But as you can hear, it's so much quieter. So with that, we're gonna get some dinner here. This is our home for the next eight, nine hours. It's quarter past six in the morning and the bus has just dropped us off at Chumpong Ferry Terminal. That took just under nine hours. There were a few stops. The seats reclined a lot. In my mind, what could have made that a little bit more comfortable is if we had a footrest and apparently the VIP bus does have a footrest but I don't know if it's worth the extra $12 a person to do that. I must have dozed quite a bit because the nine hours for me did go by quite quickly. I mean I don't feel rested but I know I did sleep kind of. <laughs> I feel the same. I think it was just kind of catching as much sleep as you possibly can while not feeling like you had a full night or you feel particularly well rested. But I 
think we just knew that when we signed up for this, so... This ain't our first rodeo with overnight buses. It sure isn't. But, you know, the good news is we're here now. I think we've got maybe about 40 minutes or so until we need to get on the boat. And the boat only takes a couple of hours. So hopefully before we know it, we'll be able to make up lost sleep on a really comfy bed. I really hope that the hotel lets us check in early because we're going to be there by like 9 in the morning. So We're either doing that or we're sleeping on a beach. Either way. <laughs> Sounds not bad. I know, right? All right. Give me my sleep. After 12 hours, we are finally in Koh Tao. And we are absolutely bushed, so we'll get some rest and we'll catch up with you tomorrow. Until next time, take care. And keep smiling.